let's begin by by centering ourselves by refocusing our our lives around God and God's love and I like to do that by by taking a deep breath breathe in and breathe out so breathe in and as you breathe in invite in the spirit of God God's love God's joy God's peace and breathe out, and as you breathe out, let go of everything else, your, your fear, your old self, your insecurities, your anxieties. Breathe in and breathe out. Be present, God is present with us. And let, let's pray together, would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for this time that we have together we pray that you would open our eyes, our ears, our hearts. Help us to open ourselves to you, to let go of what, what binds us. May your Holy Spirit be with us. Shape us to be the people that you want us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And this is the first Sunday of Lent, and the first Sunday of Lent is always uh, the same story, um, just from a different gospel. This year, it's Luke, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Listen for the word of God. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. So every once in a while I'll get one of those emails, says my account has been suspended bank account or Amazon account or, or whatever. And they say that all that they need is my bank account number, my credit card info, my social security number, my identity. Get that and it'll, it'll all be fixed. Really, like I said, they're, they're trying to get me to give up my identity so they can take it and use it for, for other things. That's kind of how I look at this story here, trying to get Jesus to give up his identity, to use that for, for other purposes. But Jesus, Jesus knows who he is, and he won't give it up. He, he won't let go. But it's not an email scam for him. It's, it's some time out in the desert, 40 days in the wilderness with, with no food, no Nothing that he's used to, no comfort, nothing to take the edge off. Just, just him and a Bible-quoting devil. Seems to me that, that we all spend some time in that wilderness eventually. I mean, maybe it's not specifically a desert. For, for most of us, the pandemic has kind of been that. Everything around us changing and nothing that we're used to and all topsy-turvy and it's kind of like what do we do what are we supposed to do where is god in all of this it's that it's that feeling that situation that experience where where your legs are just kicked out from underneath you 
you can't find your footing. It could be a, a medical diagnosis. It could be, like I said, the pandemic. It could be a move. It could be a relationship ending. It could be a death. But you're all alone. You got nothing but a Bible quoting devil to keep you company. But it should be said that it's the Holy Spirit that leads Jesus to this place. And so perhaps it's the Holy Spirit leading us too, helping us to, to define what we really need and what we just want, define who we really are, claim our identity. Jesus claims his identity, defines who he is and what he's about, defines who he is not and what he is not about. It's three temptations for Jesus. One, turn, turn a stone into a loaf of bread to feed himself, take care of himself. Two, bow down and, and, and get power and control, get kingdoms, get authority. Three, throw yourself down from the temple, protect yourself. No suffering, live a pain-free existence. They all, they all stem from the same source. They all share a common denominator. If you're the son of God, then you'll do these things. Cuts right to the core of, of who Jesus really is. If you're really the son of God, if, if God really loves and accepts you, if, if, you're really, if you're really who God is calling you to be, then, then prove it. What does it mean to be a child of God? Well, interestingly enough, for, for Jesus, it doesn't necessarily mean being well-fed, an all-you-can-eat buffet, having everything that you want. It doesn't mean power and control or influence. It doesn't even necessarily mean safety and security. When he's offered those things, he turns them down. It would be like emailing a stranger his social security number. No, Jesus doesn't have to prove himself. He knows who he is and what he's about. He's operating on a, on a different wavelength by different principles. He has a different set of values. He knows there's more to life than, than fame or, or fortune or, or even security. He knows that, that God can be trusted, that God really does care, that God provides but being God's child is not necessarily a ticket to easy street. It's not an escape from all of life's ups and downs. Instead, it's a deep, open, willing trust in God. The, the devil knows how to quote what the Bible says, but Jesus, Jesus knows how to actually live into the, the promises that the Bible points to. He knows that there's more to life than fame or fortune or, or even security. He knows that God can be trusted, that God cares, that God really does provide, but that being God's child does not necessarily mean a ticket to easy street or, or a shortcut away from life's ups and downs. Instead, it's a, it's a deep, open trust a trust in God's goodness and, and love. The devil knows how to quote the Bible, but Jesus, Jesus knows that it's more about living into the promises that the Bible actually points to. Now, our temptations are not necessarily the same as Jesus, but most of us fall for the tricks, the scam, willing to give up our identity for a get-rich-quick scheme or or to just get a few more people to like us, or for a little bit more power or control or, or influence over, over even our own lives. We would do just about anything to escape suffering or, or pain in any form. And it seems that the, the church, that we as the church have been guilty of falling for all of these things. We think or we, we justify that that doing just about anything we can to God wants us to be bigger or better or, or richer, and, and we, we can do whatever it takes to get to there. Now, Jesus won't have any of that, though. 
He knows who he is. He claims his identity. He's the son of God. And you know what? He calls us children of God too. Sons and daughters. His brothers and sisters. Our father in heaven, he teaches us to pray. What makes us give that up? Not trust it. Not live into it. What makes you give that up and not trust in that? You know, those email schemes are pretty easy to sniff out when you know what you're looking for, but, but in the wilderness, in the desert, it's a different story. We're hungry and, and wandering and all alone or feel alone, attacked. It's like nothing is where it's supposed to be. Temptation is just as much about leading us away from something as it is towards something. It's what it is for Jesus, leading him away from his identity, not so much to do these other things. And the temptations here for Jesus, they all seem pretty good. They're, they're backed by scriptures. Some bread, a little bit more control, a little bit more influence, safety, security. That's what makes sin such a tricky struggle. I mean, most of us know how to pick out the things, the obvious things. And we get pretty good at talking about and condemning the things that other people struggle with, but that we don't. And we end up falling for the, the trickier schemes. The things that don't go directly to spam. But Jesus doesn't. Jesus holds on to his identity. And that's really the call what Jesus is asking of us too, to remember who we are, God's beloved children, that we're human, that we're limited, but that we're also all interconnected, that, that we're all dependent on God and God's grace, that that's what we need, that we can't we can't always provide for ourselves. We can't always have the safety and security that we want, but that we can trust in God. Don't let go. Would you pray with me? Lord, we are your children. Help us to live into that. to see that of ourselves and to see that of others. Help us to be the children that you have called us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. May he protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he's shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again to our door. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.